I'm going to make socks. Okay. So if anyone wants spaghetti socks, um, I'm going to make them. Not even spaghetti socks, but like my cars, maybe Jimbo's face. On, so you can like, oh, so you can step on Jimbo every day just on the <laughs> bottom of your foot. Uh, That's the best seller. Best game. best seller, right on the heel. <laughs> I like socks. My socks have cars on them, but I like cars. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, we're going to talk about salvage cars and when to buy them and when not to buy them. If you check out the Copart website, probably a very good resource as to where to go pick up a salvage car. I was cruising through it because somebody sent me a link. And guess what car popped up? Come on. Relevancy, relevancy, relevancy. The blue one that the guy drove into the ocean that God told him, like, he was evil Knievel for the day and that he could definitely fly. He did not fly. He sank to the bottom of the intercoastal. And that car at auction looks all right. It says water flood damage. But you look at it, and if you don't know the story behind it, there's a glimmer of hope there. You're like, wow, this thing's pretty cool. Now they turn around and sell it pretty quickly, although it was salt water. Like, even the water and the moisture, the longer you leave it sit, the moldier it's going to get. So you want to you wanna sell that water-damaged car before mold, but after what wetness. So there'll be like hints of water, but you want it to be like pretty much dry to the touch. So you park it in the sun, but you don't want it to sit there too long and get moldy because that, that makes it less appealing to people. But if you see that car right now, like I, Hoovy's right there, he's like, oh, don't do it. I mean, I'm going to bid on it, but only up to 10 grand. Like 10 grand to me, that car's worth it because 10 grand, I'll tinker with that thing for a long time because I love the color and I love the six speed. So I'd probably rob the six-speed out of it, put it in my other convertible, and then do. I'll use my spare two uh, JZ motor if I can't get the uh, the factory V8 running, and maybe turn it because like the tires are fine, the axles are fine, the suspension's fine, the transmission you just drain it out. It's not like the transmission was spinning, and maybe I'll just bolt up the uh, the two J on it and throw a turbo on it and make like a turbo Ferrari for twenty five thousand bucks. But I would only do that if I was it because. Physically, conditionally, it looks all right. Uh, I would only do that if I could lock that thing down for like a legit ten grand. So, if you bid eleven thousand dollars, if you bid ten thousand and one, you will outbid me. Uh, Hoovy's like, <laughs> it's my extra dollar. But uh, seriously, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some bids on that and see if I like it. Now, I the only reason I'm doing that is because that's sort of like a perfect car for me because I love that color and I love that transmission and I like 360s. But I'm not expecting the win. I expect that bid to go up to probably 20 grand. So it's sort of a, a false, a false. Uh, I'm just flexing for no reason right now. The um, the process of buying a car or what type of car, that's the last car you should ever buy. The water damaged exotics are just trouble to begin with. And for the reasons I just stated, the Exotics that make sense to buy are the ones like the, the Bentley GT, right? The Bentley GT is a great car, right? But with miles on it, it's really not worth anything. It's worth 40 grand. The, the, like the airbags go out on it. Oh, that's expensive. Like if an underwriter, if somebody hits the door or hits the fender or something like that, they write big estimates on it because the guy doesn't want it anymore. He'd rather take an insurance check. And it's not that the car is necessarily unreliable or in really bad condition, but anything with like any semblance of miles on it um, and like an accident, body damage is not cheap. You go to a Ferrari dealership and get them to write up a repair estimate on on a, a bumper and a hood for a, a Ferrari, and it's going to cost you a hell of a lot of money. But then you go to a place like Fur Parts or Exotic Auto Recycling, and you scoop up a hood for twenty seven hundred bucks and a bumper for thirteen hundred dollars. Maybe it's even the color of the car already. You could just sort of bolt them on. And instead of a $35,000 estimate on a fifty dollars or $60,000 car that totaled it out and sent it to the auction, uh, you can get it pretty cheap. Now, there's a lot of people out there. It's not like you're the only one in this game. And there was when I looked at an exotic car, Copart, it was something like three or 400 cars currently available going through auction right now. So there are plenty of options out there for you to pick from, but you have to sort of find one that works for you that you can get at a decent price. The reason these salvage cars go through auction is there's enough people looking at them and people that know how to fix them or own body shops or, or like own dealerships or they're going to wash titles, whatever. These cars are the cars that you buy, you fix, and you drive. And if you want to drive a Bentley GT 
and possibly have one for twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars by scooping it up for eighteen grand with the damage and then fixing it yourself, throwing some paint on it, and just saying like, look, I just got a sixty-five thousand mile Bentley GT, which is gonna yeah it require some maintenance, but even before the accident, it's a thirty-eight, forty thousand dollar car. Now you get a Bentley GT, which nobody else knows. It's a thirty-eight or forty thousand dollar car. It's a great cheater car. But you get to drive that car for twenty grand, and uh, that I think is a good play. And I even think it's worth twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars long term, um, even with the salvage car, if you can produce the repair records and the damage and all of that stuff. That's probably the most important part of fixing a damaged car, an or exotic car with a salvage title, is having evidence of what the damage was, showing that it was cosmetic and just, and let's just call it priced out um, of repair and priced out of repair is, I just came up with that, is essentially stating that um, it's more expensive to fix than it is to just write, write a check for. So it's because the, the parts are too expensive or more expensive on the new end, on, on the end that the insurance company has to work with. The insurance company, if you don't have insurance on that car, you're gonna fix that and you're gonna fix it cheap. If you and you're not going to go to the dealership and say give me new parts for fourteen or twenty thousand dollars, if you're an insurance company, you don't really have that luxury. You can't be like, oh, cool, we're just going to go to this recycling company and get you a used bumper. That's not how insurance companies work. They write the check for the car, they total the car. You have the option to buy it back, but a lot of people are just like, you know what, give me the check, I'll go on to the next one. So there are good deals out there if you know what you're looking for. Stay away from the frame damage stuff. Stay away from the fire stuff. That's always a that's always bad news, but cosmetic damage on, or even theft recovery, theft recovery, you really have to know your mechanical stuff. Um, anything that's a TMU, sort of stay away from true mileage unknown or anything that doesn't have an accurate odometer statement. The, the steps, if you're gonna buy a salvaged exotic car would be to, and repair it, is to look at the, um, the history report on the car then you want to do a PPI on the car, or inspect the car, or look at a thorough inspection of the car. If it's all cosmetic damage, no frame damage, or anything that's going to really affect the drivability, you can sort of get a rough list in your head of what parts it needs. Go on the eBay, go on the, the marketplaces, and start looking up what those parts cost, and you can piece together, reverse engineer what it would cost you to fix that car. And if you can get a $30,000 car for 20 grand and you know it only needs $10,000 worth of work, don't do it. It doesn't make any sense because that's not the case. The, the point of buying a, a car that's been totaled out or going through one of these auctions is because you're going to get it and you will get a $30,000 car for $12,000. You can put $6,000 into it. And so instead of spending 30, you've got it for 18 and you effectively have the same car. But there will be a resale issue with that going forward. Um, it's just... There, there's cars you want to stay away from, and it's sort of an art. You, you can easily lose a couple of grand, especially with exotics. It's it's sort of a gamble. And if you go in there and you're like, cool, yeah, the, the, the engine doesn't start because it doesn't have keys. I'll just get a set of keys. And then you find out the engine is blown. That could be $20,000. So all things to keep in mind. Know what you're getting into. Don't just dive into it. But there are good deals out there. If you get in a car, doesn't have any check engine lights, fires right up, um, runs and drives, that's a good start. If it's just cosmetic damage, look what the used, uh, used, the used parts cost, and you could score yourself a pretty solid deal. Like I'm gonna try to do on that 360, but fingers crossed, I don't expect it to, don't expect it to sell for 10 grand. But my 10 grand bid is gonna be on it. Thank you for watching. Good luck shopping out there. See you tomorrow. For those of you not familiar with my other company, I started a company called Adventure Drives, which combines driving and bucket list travel. So it's a lot of fun. Our next trip is up to the Northern Lights in Iceland at the end of February. We're gonna be doing snowmobiling on glaciers, off-roading, taking a dip in the Blue Lagoon, and drinking whiskey until we're silly. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. After that, we're off to Europe for a trip in July. If you're interested, prices can be done per person. It starts at about $3,000 per person for Iceland. Don't worry, if you don't have somebody to go with you, we can match you up with somebody. You can check the link in the description for adventuredrives.com and sign up today.